So I've been watching the petrol crisis. It's gone totally out the news. And as far as I'm concerned, it's been totally under discussed in the alternate media. And I feel it warrants a lot more discussion. I think people in the alternative media are taking the attitude of it's a, a nothing burger, it'll blow over, it's panic buying or whatever they're putting it down to. I'm just going to talk about a couple of the things that they say is causing it and my own experience because in our household we haven't been able to access petrol even though in our neighborhood we're very fortunate in the fact that just down the road we've got a shell around the corner we've got a BP, we've got a major Tesco which has uh, the other side of town which is not that far away, we've got an Asda on the outskirts of town, we've got a Morrison's on the one side with another shell and on the other side an Esso and even not that far away in a neighbouring uh, town, five miles away, there's a retail park they haven't had. So it seems rather unusual that in our area where we have a lot of petrol stations there hasn't been anything now and it's going on a little longer now I always think they're crises and sometimes if, if a crisis has been blown up in the media and goes away maybe after three four days I tend to think yeah nothing burger and uh, those South African food rights were a little bit like that or supermarket rights that to me was fell into that category whereas for me this has gone on just long enough for me to be thinking that there's something bigger going on here and that's why I've got that on screen there because I'll just briefly cover that article but for you guys who may not know in the UK there's been these so-called eco warriors who we know are all backed by George Soros which is why the police give them a free ride etc who've been blocking major routes and motorways as well so what I'm going to say with the petrol crisis with this nonsense it's all the war on the motorist and again the war on fuel similar to the war on CO2 what is it aimed at? Changing our lifestyles. At the end of the day, what happens with the fuel crisis? You're limited. You can't drive as far because there's this uncertainty about whether you'd be able to fuel up. Affecting the supply chain. They're already talking about this dragging on, affecting Christmas deliveries, online orders, all that sort of thing. It's again putting a huge amount of uncertainty and therefore anxiety into our lives. What was one of the key um, wouldn't say to go, the key tactics of the communists in bringing down a country, it's demoralization. And what's more demoralizing than not being able to get petrol for your car and to travel freely and to be able to go and get your groceries or do your normal daily things without having to think to yourself, oh, oh you know, how, how much have I got left? Can I get blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's the demoralization. And of course, you know, we've got the push for the electric cars pretty predictably and that like, like that's going to help anyone because as David Icke says, with everything's electric, it just takes one switch because no one can, there's no backup of fuel, diesel, gas, whatever. So um, one of the things they're saying, why this happened, now I've been ringing around a lot. Now, the kind of quandary you find yourself in with this fuel shortage in my neighborhood is where do you get information, right? So the first place you, you would think of go, phone the petrol stations, ask if they've got fuel. Well, of course, they're not answering, although amazingly, I did manage to get through to two of them today. Fairly helpful. Seems from what I can glean, the one gets deliveries in the morning and there's a hell of a rush on in the morning. And then if you leave it late in the day, you probably won't get. And the other guy told me he thinks there's still a fair amount of panic buying, although he says there is actually a driver shortage. So in terms of the whole driver shortage thing, that seems to be a thing in terms of Gareth Icke's show where he interviewed a uh, HGV driver. However, if there's been a shortage, this has been in the making a long time, the shortage of um, HGV drivers and fuel tanker drivers. It didn't like happen overnight. So why did the shortages just click in like that and haven't been able to click out even though they say the army's delivering? There's a problem there. You know, there's problems in life that develop over time and you can see them coming. But somehow this was just shoved on us. So there's definitely something more at play. And I think the media, of course, the horrendous media, played their role by causing the panic and uh, setting this off. They kind of ignited the thing. So the reason why there is a shortage of HGV drivers in the UK is not like they'll tell you it's Brexit, of course. It's always going to be that. That's their big thing that they can throw every stone at now. So it's the fact that a lot of HGV drivers left the profession during the lockdown because the conditions were awful. They were on the motorways, their service at the services, the motorway services, a lot of the 
um, outlets were shut so they couldn't get food they couldn't use the toilet their facilities where they can use restrooms were all closed so they were basically stuck doing their ablutions and having to in the truck and having to have all their food already prepared couldn't get a coffee whatever so i mean it kind of put them off you know because they're thinking what the hell is this all about so that's one of the reasons why a lot of people left the profession but on the other side people weren't able to enter the profession because of COVID. of course no one can take their driving test and for some reason at the uh, licensing agency there's a massive backlog of applications to be processed something like 54,000 which is absolutely ridiculous so I mean how's anyone going to be able to apply so the guy who, who Gareth I talked to was saying that if someone decides tomorrow great there's a crisis there's a career opening for me I'll become a driver he says the first obstacle is they've got to get a medical and to get a medical they need to see a GP in person which is pretty difficult right now in the UK because GPs have been reluctant now that they're doing these Skype and video calls to go back to that you might have to wait a long time for an appointment then they've got to get their thing processed by the licensing agency or whatever they call it the DBSA or whatever and that's going to take months and months and months then they actually have to get their provisional license pass a test then pass the practical it's a such a long-winded process particularly because of all the COVID restrictions it's going to take literally forever uh, months and months so bringing new people in is not necessarily a thing and even if they bring new foreign drivers in now there's going to have to be some documentation going on so it seems the shortage of drivers have a has a basis in reality but on the other hand it came on mighty mighty quick so it's interesting now how long is this going to last because certainly in my neighborhood it isn't going away now the one petrol station guy said to me that he thinks it's getting worse and people are still panicking then i ran around all the taxi companies because i thought they would have a good finger on the pulse in terms of their drivers driving about you can't couldn't get a taxi this evening at all they were either booked up or they had no petrol and the one taxi driver who, who runs the taxi company, he said he thinks it's getting much worse. And even for him getting into work every day is a real hassle and a real worry about how he's going to get fuel. So there you go. I uh, even rang all the takeaway. Now there are in our town, there's about 30, 35. There's probably more I haven't even thought of in the back streets uh, of these kind of, you, you know, delivery, pizza delivery, curry, uh, Chinese, whatever it is, Lebanese, Mediterranean, the whole thing, plus just eat delivers. So I thought, well, I'll ring Pizza Domino's, find out how their drivers have been getting on. So they said there wasn't, a, Domino's was quite helpful. He said there wasn't a particular problem. The pizza guy said he didn't have a clue, but he suggested I Google it. But I said to him, look, you know, Facebook and Twitter, not Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp are all out at the moment and have been for many hours. So that option of checking in with your local communities is down. So I have been checking in with my local neighborhood Facebook groups, two groups in the towns that I'm near. And uh, people were regularly posting about, you know, crisis. Guys, where do I get fuel? Where do I get fuel? And people make suggestions. But the problem is not very organized because people don't always put a time. So once you've read it, you don't know that could be already out of date. If you catch it in the nick of time, some people have been lucky enough to get petrol. But in one of the groups, I noticed there's another phenomenon at work, which you do get because the, these neighborhood groups are beset by Karens and people who are quite trivial, narrow-minded, yet who think they're ultra important, you know, in the community for some unknown reason, self-appointed community leaders I, in their own minds, I think. And they were saying things like people suggesting where fuel stations are open or people posting about where can they get fuel are only fueling panic. And I actually saw that some other people were discouraged from making those valuable, helpful posts by these bullies who are, um, it was particularly in the group, not in our town, in another group, in a different town, people were bullied out of asking or giving these helpful updates, just because you have these busybody Karens saying it's fueling panic. So people didn't post in the one group for a couple of days and the panic did not abate. So it's not people in groups causing panic. We are just being community spirited and helping each other. But amazing how there's these, I don't know, they're probably not art and provocateurs, just numpties even in groups making it more difficult but now with Facebook out Twitter's useless in my area for this sort of information and so is a local paper so it, there's this weird situation where it's a basic thing like petrol but you cannot get the information you've got to get in your car ride around looking and every minute your, your, your fuel is going down so maybe 
I think it's the general case around here that you're luckier in the mornings and early afternoons, probably much unluck more unlucky. For example, I did manage to uh, ring around and I found out they were all closed, but I had to be inventive, like ringing people across the road like, or ringing a hotel nearby and asking them, you know, by the way, <laughs> ringing via America, you know, you put you, they put you through to the bleeding call center in America. You're going to say, oh, can I be put through to the actual person on the actual desk in the hotel in such and such town in England? And then you get through and once you got through, they will tell you, no, don't bother that station across the road from us is closed. So I was thinking out the box in terms of doing my little calling around to find it. And uh, as I say, that's why I said it is a significant problem and the avenues to find out whether they've got are particularly small. So how long is this going to drag on? How long is it going to last? Is it the new normal? Are we getting to the point where we have to be really conscious of where our fuel is and only fill up in the mornings? This kind of thing and just getting used to one more thing in life not being predictable, one more staple in life just not being there. You know, you wonder. Then I look at the Tory party conference and it's just rumbling on. I mean, nothing's even being said. It's gone out of the press and yet locally I am still finding it a problem. I believe that in the southeast, the northwest, it's not as chronic, but in the Midlands and up towards the Manchester area, definitely down in the southeast, it is certainly an issue. And it's certainly an issue in the north of London. So if any of you guys have been watching this and anything I've said is at all helpful in any way, I hope it is because I've been kind of disappointed that there are not enough people talking about it or the importance of it. So as I say, I think it's a lot to do with the war on the motorist. And it's the beginning of further shutdowns, I think. It's a new form of lockdown. Did you guys see that a major power plant, coal-fired power plant in Germany, had to shut down, causing a lot of power outages the other day because of the uh, they couldn't get deliveries? And then I believe that in Kent, there was a, a power blackout last night, a couple of nights ago. Um, if, if you guys watch Hearts of Oak, there was um, someone talking about it there anyway. So. And now we have the, the Facebook and all, but mind you, it's not a sad day, is it? Facebook's down, Instagram's down, WhatsApp's down, but InfoWars and BitChute and all the alternates are still up. So that's kind of a victory. It's not all bad, is it? But certainly in terms of, of your groups and finding out petrol information, not very helpful, is it? Uh, yeah, so I'm just having a look to see. So I, I think it's definitely, you know the start of the new normal and the whole Facebook outage thing could be also linked to Cyber Polygon and all that. Another thing that was going on in our area, another knock on from the petrol is the congestion at various petrol stations means the bus routes have been interrupted. So buses are either very late or bus routes are diverted. So the bus isn't even an option for people who don't have petrol. It's not as simple as they'll take the bus because the bus routes have been cancelled. In fact, many were or many were delayed by over half an hour. We drove past one bus stop and there was more people standing there than I've ever seen. Yeah, I suppose this is to, to get people into walking. No, no, thank you. Not into walking. I don't do walking. Don't do triathlons. Don't do cycling. Not, not for me. But uh, oh, quite a funny story. We decided we went to two of the locals, the BP, the Shell, and then we landed up at Tesco to have a look. And it looked really hopeful. You know, there's a queue. There's lots of people in the forecourt filling up. So we thought, ah, bingo, we've made it. So um, I popped into Tesco. My mom waits in the car and pick up a few items of groceries thinking we'll, you know, get a snack, join the queue, have a leisurely snack in the queue thinking we're going to get our petrol. It's all good, you know. Not really. We get in the queue after a huge amount of hooting by angry people who, of course, you know, are aggravated by people looking for petrol because they fortunately for them aren't. And we're in the queue and I said, well, what the hell's going on? These people are just sitting in the forecourt. No one's paid and no one's moved off. What's going on? So it's obvious there's probably no fuel. So then a, a large amount of men emanated from somewhere, I don't know where, and were shouting at all of us cars. It was totally, uh, they couldn't hear what they were saying. It, it was obvious they were telling people, go away, go away. But the problem is, once you're stuck in the queue, you can't move forward, you can't move back. You have to rely on the people at the very front to start moving so you can go away. And they weren't prepared to do that. People were stubbornly just staying. It's like, no, I'm not moving. I'm I'm here. <laughs> you know, I'm in situ where there will someday be petrol and I'm not moving. So people were fairly stubborn for a while. Then they did move off. And at that point, we were able to ask someone... Um, 
what was going on. So he said there's no fuel. So we said, yeah, okay, that's obvious. But why are all these people just parked? And he said, I don't know. Well, once we drove past them, some of them were getting rather comfortable. Others had purchased snacks. And I think they were just going to sit there all night, if necessary, until the tanker came. So they were just bagging their position. So it just shows people must be desperate. You know, you're not going to do that unless there really is a problem. I don't think they were panic buying. They obviously just want maybe they didn't have enough petrol to even move on but I did read that was half six and just after nine on the Facebook group I read that a tanker had delivered the petrol to Tesco but because the kiosk closed at eight because I said to my mom how, how will the people even pay if the tanker comes after eight because the people at the kiosk go home and they can't authorize the pump you know so they can't sign you out so that's exactly what happened the pump replenished the petrol station but the people were still Stuck, stuck without petrol. They just were very disappointed, according to the post in the Facebook group. Devastated, because they had to go away, because there was no way for them to pay. Even though you can pay at the pump, you still need someone in the ca in the thing to switch the pump on. So they they just had to go away. So, I mean, I, I feel sorry for them after sitting there. You know, I don't know how long they'd been there before we got there. So anyway, still wasted time for them, isn't it? And when... It reopened the following morning. They were only serving essential workers in NHS. So even if those people had come back the following morning, unless they were working for NHS, fire department, whatever, they wouldn't be able to get their fuel. So, yeah, and, and some people were also worried because one of our petrol stations had a bottleneck near the station and uh, it's right opposite the vaccination center. So a lot of people who were eager to get the booster couldn't get to the vaccination center because everyone was queuing at the petrol station. Yeah, that, that's a sad story, of course. Uh, oh, we know that on my channel, don't we? So uh, anyway, as I say, Twitter was useless. And that is my full report, I think, with lots of information. Just to end off with this little Daily Mail article about this nonsense going on. It says the mastermind. I bet he was hardly a mastermind. An absolute, I think you could replace that easily with useful idiot extraordinaire. Behind the Insulate Britain eco mob, uh, Soros backed, of course, says he would have refused to move for a crying woman trying to get to her mother, 81, in hospital and would block an ambulance with dying patients inside after activists brought three London routes to a standstill. Imagine having the gall and the lack of compassion to actually say that you felt comfortable blocking traffic for those people. I mean, what a disgusting individual he's a climate zealot well that's right let's not mention his name but anyway it goes on to say how demonstrators from extinction rebellion were clashing with motorists causing huge tailbacks close to the center of the city that's london on their 11th day note how long has this petrol thing been going on nearly two weeks 11 days as well quite funny that this craziness has also been going on for 11th day as if these people aren't getting their way They've got Thunberg that gets ever so much airtime. Anyone who wants to talk this green communism nonsense gets ever so much airtime, but they've still got to do this. Uh, peace, police have complained that they lack powers to stop eco. But they don't. They lack the will. They've got the powers. They lack the will. They'll go and dance with them and, and, and cater to them. I'm surprised they're not serving them Starbucks donuts and coffees, you know, as a concierge service to them. You know, they don't do anything else. And uh, Boris Johnson, Preeti Patel threatened six months jail terms. That won't be happening. Uh, no, 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 no. So you can see there another attack on the motorists. So if you can, if you can get petrol, if you're around London, you're going to be hassled by this mob. So again, I just think it feeds in to the theme that this is a coordinated attack on the motorist and uh, I think it will rumble on for a long time in order to exacerbate food shortages, etc., etc., and to help bring in the new normal. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, be pleased to hear your reactions about what's happening in your area. Take care, and I wish you all happy refueling in the near future.